okay so previously we created a network for abc company and we created separate ip subnet ip space and then for, for our that separate ip space we create the broadcast domain and uh, we tag two ethernet ports over there and on, on the top of those uh, broadcast domain we cr created a subnet and we created v server or storage vm named xyz which has two leaf and which was leasing a ip from the that particular subnet and it attained the ip 70 and 71 using those two ips we created the inbox dns and uh, and we found like we could able to reach those TNS on both the uh, IPs and you, so that was the previous configuration which we did we did the network configuration so now we are going to create a volume and uh, in order to create the volume this is a flex wall the terminology which NetApp use you will see like I am not getting an option XYZ the reason why I am not getting a option because I have not enabled any protocol over here. So let me enable the protocols. So I have created the protocol, and now if you will ch check in the you know it, it this v, v server server has a capability to communicate on the nfs so let me go back to volume and tr again try creating flex wall so now i can see that particular v server it is listed over there and i'll create one test zero one wall and i'm going to create for one gigabit ethernet or one gb in size performance we can decide which type of uh, service level we want whether we want performance or value so i'll use volume because i want more space and here like uh, i will i can specify like which particular permission need to be allocated so this will be assigned later so we'll do the assignment later and i'm enabling the snapshot copy which is going to take the default policy initially so this is how we create the flex wall now if we'll see the flex wall configuration this is flex wall oh, and create with the mount path slash temp a uh, test zero one and if i have to mount from the client this is a share path need to be utilized so just let me validate whether i could able to see from the client yes i could able to see so I'm creating one directory and I'll create test one try to mount this one mount we have created a uh, test zero one mount point so we we will use the test zero one to mount it and see the operation is not permitted and the reason why the permission it is not permitting because i have not created the export policy so i'll go here click on edit i'll create the export policy for this let me go over here. Let me create a sport policy and I'm going to create net 
I can give subnet also or like uh, if I specify 0 .0 .0 .0 dot zero dot zero dot zero slash zero then it means anyone can access so I'm just going to keep to this particular segment of the uh, network that uh, who could able to access this share giving complete control and this is rule which has been getting created for this policy and policy better better to create the new policy instead of uh, editing the existing one so let's create the new policy 192 and let me give this new policy policy is created and this is a rule for that one that this particular segment can access the data from this share and yeah so now this as this particular wall is being mounted on storage vm this and again i will try to access it again it is not permitted why it is not been permitted because since it is been accessed by the x xyz uh, v server i have not specified the permission over here the export permission because it needs the permission on both this side so i'm just going to select the existing permission which i just created so that it will have the same permission so now with root and the my wall it is having a same export permission let me try mounting this uh, show mount and the mistake which i was making is small t so it is case sensitive and i can go in this particular test zero one i can see like it has been mounted and let's write some data and create one file let's say 100 mb i'm using going to use block size of one megabyte and count is going to be 100 just i'm creating one small file and let's see it has been created if we'll see right now we can see like this user the the, the space has 100 uh, mb space has been occupied so let me refresh this let click this and come back to this now it is showing 101 megabyte has been utilized likewise the flex will be keep on getting consumed by the user like under mb2 and again someone write the data and someone make so in this way you it will keep on happening and let's take an example if it got filled and it got filled then there could be a stage when we need to do the expansion of the volume well now we can see like uh, the logically we have consumed 900 uh, mb so when we are out of 1 gb so we are in the stage where the user might access and a request for expansion of data so we'll make it to 2 gb over here and 
we will just perform the save so the capacity has been changed from 1 gig to 2 gig in this way we can do the uh, we can do the expansion of uh, flex wall as well so let's take an example if someone is not consuming a lot of data suddenly the request has been reduced you can reduce the capacity as well like i can reduce to 1.5 as well and this is a benefit of flex wall you can grow it you and you can shrink the size as well so i know ma many of the products in the market where you can grow but you can't squeeze the size out of that so flex uh, netapp gives us flexibility to shrink the volume as well so that's it for a complete flex wall okay thank you